Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Further Review here at Buffalo News. I'm Ryan O'Halloran, joined by Jay Skursky. Another loss for the Bills on Sunday. And they count all as one in the standings, but this could have some ripple effects because of how it happened, the bad start, the really bad ending. So Jay, let's talk about what let's talk about what the talk of the league is. If you're looking, if you're listening to anything, it's Sean McDermott's uh, end of game management, which was terrible. The floor yeah. is yours. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I feel like I'm stealing your thunder here a little bit because you wrote your column about it, and rightfully so, right? We, you know, you and I sit next to each other at the games. We're kind of talking about, you know, storylines uh, as the game is going on, and you know, when there was 32 seconds left in the game, neither you or I thought that this is where we'd be talking about or you know writing an entire column about uh, an absolutely bungled, you know, final minute of the game, final 30 seconds of the game. But Sean McDermott managed to do it to his credit. He owned up for it. He, he took blame. He said it will, it was my fault. I think those were some of the first words out of his mouth at his postgame press conference. But, you know, this is the type of loss, Ryan, that if you're on the fence about Sean McDermott, and I don't feel like there are many fans that are on the fence about him. Like they are really set in their ways on their opinions about him. They're either, you know, understanding that he has brought them to a level of success that this franchise hasn't seen since Marv Levy, or he, or they're of the mindset that he's not the right guy for the job, that they, that he has taken them as far as he can take them, and that they need a better game day manager. They just need something different from the head coach. Well, if you were one of those people that was deciding, yesterday's loss is pushing you toward that type of, of group that is losing faith in the head coach. It was that bad of a performance from the head coach in terms of clock management, time management. It was a game that the Texans were begging the Bills to win, and Sean McDermott handed it right back to him. It, it it's a very damaging loss that goes beyond just one loss in the, in, in, you know, in the standings, as you said. And I, I think it's because it's going to erode a lot of faith uh, amongst this team's fan base in in Sean McDermott as the head coach of the team. The word you used in your report card is apropos. It was malpractice. And it, it's, you know, you'd love to be on the headset there. And, you know, the second layer to this is they've been outclassed in the first half of these two games by teams they were supposed to be as good as in Baltimore and Houston. Okay, so to me that points to a head coach who doesn't have his guys ready to play. I don't care about the injuries. Everybody has injuries. Houston won yesterday without their top two running backs. And they lost their best receiver uh, early in the first quarter after his touchdown, Nico Collins. So, on the on the end of game sequence is three passes, but they were low they were low percentage passes. There was yeah. there wasn't a screen, there wasn't a shallow cross, uh, and and also empty backfield. He had nowhere to run if he wanted to scramble. You know, put him out, put Josh Allen on a bootleg, give him a run pass option where if he doesn't see anything, he can scramble, use some time that way. He could have run around and, and burned some time. So, you know, this was this is something that's not going to go away, and nor should it. And you know, I don't know about the response to your stuff on Twitter today, Jay, but mine was, he's in over his head. Terry Pulikula's got to make a move. And why is this happening again? I think the most uh, accurate thing is, why is this happening again? Because this is not the first time. And I, uh, it's, it's, it's as much as he wants to own up to it, he's going to have to continue to try and explain it. And he damn sure better explain it to his team today because a couple there are guys in the locker room who did not agree were wondering why that decision was made for three passes. Yeah. I, I, you know, you're, you, you tweeted after the game, uh, about, you know, some conversations you had, uh, in the, in the locker room, uh, I, I think that, again, you know, you talk about the ripple effects from this loss. And, and, yeah, it was to an AFC contender for the second straight week on the road, right? This is a team in the Texans that the Bills very well may see again. And you're setting yourself up for failure here, right? You've got a loss now head-to-head -to, -head to the Ravens. You've got a loss head-to-head -to, -head to the Texans. And as funny as it sounds, I feel like this loss is probably tougher to stomach than the game against Baltimore. Yeah. You know, you could chalk that one up as just being a bad performance, but – as I said earlier, this was a game that the Texans were begging to lose. They were trying to hand the game to the Bills, and the Bills just wouldn't take it. And that, in many ways, is more troubling than getting blown out. Ryan, you know, a lot has been written, a lot has been said about the end-of-game sequence, and that certainly contributed to the loss, but it wasn't the only reason. You know, this team did not play well, and that particularly is true offensively. Yeah, yeah there were some issues defensively in the, in the first quarter, the first half. And they fell behind, but you know the defense did its part 
in that second half, get, you know, getting those two huge takeaways from Bernard and then the fumble. And they give the offense the ball first and 10 at the Houston 15 yard line with about four minutes to go. And the offense just can't finish the job. And a lot of the conversation, if it isn't about the coaching, is about the failures on offense and in particular of the passing game right now. What did you make of the performance both of Josh Allen and his wide receivers? It was uh, it was a good day to be Khalil Shakir's agent. <laughs> That's what I'll say. He's eligible for an extension after the season. Josh Allen, 9 of 30, historically bad performance for a quarterback, not just him, nearly 30 years. It was shocking to see. It wasn't like he started fast and then cooled off. He was bad from the start. He said after the game, they're missing by a little. Well, that's a big little because there were some big misses in the passing game. But I think the bigger point, you asked Sean McDermott about this after the game. Bill's, Bill's receivers combined for 18 targets, and they had – seven uh, eight catches well if we're talking just receivers it was four catches four you catches get, yeah. i was looking at the wrong thing 18 yeah. targets four catches curtis samuels you tweeted out after the game he had a hell of an accomplishment he had one catch for zero <laughs> yards and he had one carry for minus one yards they got to they got to start figuring that out but what you're seeing right now from this bill's receiver court they can't get open yeah, um, no no and, and that's that's the concern and you know i think this week you know this week could be a week to ask people okay how do you fix this Help is not on the way. If you get Shakira back, great. But, you know, from your view, it's it, this is, you know, Josh Allen will rebound. Yeah. These receivers, they may not be capable. They're not good enough. Uh, I mean, they, they aren't good enough. They're, they're barely passable with Shakir in the lineup. Shakir's a nice player. I don't know that anyone would say that he's a number one receiver in the NFL. He's the number one here by default because they don't have anything else that's even remotely close to that. I, I rode the elevator down to after the game yesterday with a, a former member of the Bills. He, he maybe doesn't want to be known, so I'm not going to name him. But he said, uh, this is a paraphrasing, but the book is out right now on how to defend the Bills. You pressure Josh Allen, you blitz him like crazy, and the offensive line is not handling it well. Again, Allen was pressured. I think it was almost on 50% of his dropbacks yesterday. I think it was the number was exact exactly 45%. That's way too high. The issue is, though, I mean, that's that's one of the big issues. The, the second, though, is that these wide receivers are gaining no separation. So even if Ed Allen had time to throw the ball, he doesn't have anybody that's open to throw it to. And I think that's making him maybe not trust what he's seeing. You know, he was a little late yesterday on, a, on more than a couple of throws because I don't think he believes that he's going to throw it to somebody who's open. And so, and, and you know, l listen, this was just, uh, you know, from start to finish, it was bad, right? And Allen was bad too because on the on the opportunities that he did have, when the on the times that there were that guys were open, he missed them. He misses Mac Collins down the field in the first quarter. He misses Dalton Kincaid down the deep down the middle in the second quarter. He misses Hollins again uh, over the middle. Now there was some blame uh, on the wide receiver in both of those instances, I believe. But the point is, is that they're not connecting. The Samuel thing, I mean, five games in is a disaster. Uh, Hollins should not be playing offense. The guy was signed to be a special teams, teams player. I mean, the fact that he's on the field right now, as much as he is offensively, is mismanagement of the position. And that's, that's Brandon Bean. That's not, I, I don't care what wide receiver coach, what offensive coordinator you've got in here. These guys are barely getting snaps on most other NFL rosters at the position. Brandon Bean's got to do something at the position. And, and I don't think that he should wait until the trade deadline. I think he's got to be working the phones today at that yeah. spot. Yeah, and, and, and if nothing happens, is what you're doing is not working. Give somebody else a shot who's on the roster. Maybe K.J. Handler can give you a call-up. Maybe he can give you some burst. Tyrell Shavers, give him a couple targets because, you know, Steve Spurrier said about the University of Florida a couple weeks ago, whatever you're doing, try something different. And <laughs> right. that's about his – that's a perfect statement. And it's uh, – you know, you mentioned the other guys, Samuel, Hollins. It's um, – I always go back to draft night. Jacksonville made the bold move to trade up and get Brian Thomas. Yeah. He is an immediate stud. I know and, <laughs> and then we could go back and forth on the Xavier Worthy thing. Xavier Worthy could be helping this team right now. Yeah. Uh, so that's that that is the ultimate Monday afternoon quarterback as we film this or record this at 141. But uh, I agree. It's uh, Brandon Bean, it's uh him and his staff need to be scouring practice squads. They need to be scouring the street. And also they got to be thinking about, okay, they have that extra second round pick. How bold do they want to be to save this season?
All right, Jay, we, 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 we picked up the carcass of what happened on Sunday. Now, there, there were some, some positives. And let's start, with, uh, let's start with Terrell Bernard coming back from his injury with the pectoral. I thought he was all over the field. That has to be encouraging for, for the Bills moving forward. Yeah, no question. I mean, the thing that Bernard did so well, really all of last season, is make big plays, right? You know, the, the sacks, the interceptions, fumble recoveries or forced fumbles, those game-changing type of plays. And, you know, I thought Balen Spector did his best in, in Bernard's absence while he was out. But Spector does not have the big playability that Bernard has. Very few linebackers in the NFL do. And that fourth-quarter interception, you know, we talked about it earlier – the defense did its part. The defense gave this op, you know, this team a chance to win. And Bernard is such a big, you know, important part of that. His ability to take the football away is something that, you know, I, I think was, it, it's obviously key for any team. Uh, you know, here's a number for you, right? 30 games in a row uh, since Josh Allen came into the NFL, the Bills had won when, when winning the, the takeaway battle by two or more. That streak came to an end yesterday. So, Bernard's return, what he means for this defense moving forward, the fact that he looked pretty healthy. I mean, I, you know, I, I didn't see the snap numbers, but I don't remember him even coming out of the game. So I, I think that that's a big step for this defense. Looking ahead a little bit, which we'll, we'll continue to do here in the show, you know, they're, I think they're close to getting Taron Johnson back as well. So, they, you know, even though they lost some guys going into, you know, into uh, yesterday's game, the fact that Bernard was able to, to step up I thought was good. What do you think, Ryan, uh, of a guy that you know came into the lineup for uh, one of those injured players at Oliver? I thought Dwayne Carter had a good game. What do you think? I thought he was great. Uh, you know, right from the hop, he did a nice job reading that screen. Uh, got a tackle for loss. He had another tackle for loss. He had a quarterback hit. He drew a penalty. And I mean, he is he was very active. I thought even if Ed Oliver comes back against the Jets or the next week, I think Carter did enough to earn more playing time in that rotation. Because let's face it, Ed Ed Oliver was off to a slow start this season before his injury, and so that that I think that was a uh, you know a big big uh, positive for the Bills. And you know, you mentioned Bernard; he makes Dorian Williams better. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's the ripple effect, and and then the the last guy they they got to get Taron Johnson back because God bless Cam Lewis, he's a dime player. Mm -hmm. He is he is struggling as a tackler in nickel, struggling in coverage as a nickel, and like you said about Bale Inspector, he's a good guy. If you need him for a couple of games, he he can play the hell out of special teams. But he's having to play a lot of snaps, and and, and, and teams are going after him, which they should, which the Bills would if they were playing him. So uh, I think the defense, if you want to sum it up, is they hung in there. Yeah. And they gave up the big play. But when you produce two takeaways in the fourth quarter on the road, and you get three points out of them, all you can say is they did their job, the offense didn't do theirs. Yeah, I think you're looking at 23 points. You would have taken that going mm -hmm. into that game against the Texans. You got to you got to count on your offense to score more than that. And I, I think real quick, offensively, we should mention James James Cook. I thought he had another strong game, close to 80 yards uh, on the ground. He, he you know, I, I tweeted this during the game. You know, thinking back on it, I, I still believe it to be true. Anything that is involving anyone other than James Cook on offense right now looks really really difficult. When James Cook gets the ball, whether it's rushing. Or sometimes, you know, as a pass catcher, it looks smooth. He looks really, really comfortable. I think the Bills have got a really good running back. We know they've got a good quarterback. It's finding those other parts right now to contribute because I think Cook is, is more than doing his part right now offensively. And, Ryan, we do need to look ahead here a little bit. You know, the sky, uh, while it might seem to be falling, it is not, right? They are, The Bills are still 3-2. and two. They are still in the lead in the division and that might be the, the the biggest positive to come out of of Sunday in week five is that this AFC East just does not look really good I mean you've got three teams in the the Dolphins the Jets and the Patriots who are really struggling I'm going to toot my own here own horn here for a second first I'll criticize myself I had the Dolphins as being good this year I thought they were going to win the division obviously the Tua injury you know is a, is a big factor there I did not believe in the Jets. I thought the Jets were going to stink, and guess what? They do. So looking ahead to, to Monday night, how do you assess where the Jets are and then where the Bills are in relation to the rest of the division? If you put Josh Allen on the Jets, they'd be a Super Bowl contender. Right now, Aaron Rodgers is looking his age. I don't think the play calling is great. But what the Jets got going for him right now is they can make stops. And mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a first one to 20 on Monday night wins. 
And this Jet team is going to be really playing for their season a little bit. I mean, they're only one game out, but they lose to the Broncos at home. They lose to the Vikings in London. Now they're coming back for a home game against the Bills. And so I think there's going to be a sense of urgency. There should be a sense of urgency on the Bills part. Garrett Wilson's a handful at receiver for the Jets if Rodgers has time to throw. Brees Hall's a handful at running back if he can get some room to run. So the Jets have some skill position players, but they're not good up front on the offensive line. The quarterback is having to throw too much. But on the flip side, Sauce Gardner's a good player. Other good players, uh, the, the Williams' brothers, uh, they're good players on defense. So I think this is going to be a – this is going to be a defensive struggle uh, on Monday night. Yeah, you you mentioned it there, Garrett Wilson, a ridiculous stat line yesterday, 22 targets. So the whole everybody eats here in Buffalo, it's one <laughs> one guy eats in New York. Uh, to your point, though, Ryan, we've seen this Jets defense give the Bills trouble for yeah. years. They have defended Josh Allen really as, any, as well as anyone in the NFL. So that is going to be a challenge. And the Brees Hall factor, we know that this Bills run defense – uh, has been, I guess, up and down is maybe the the most fair way to put it. Struggled mightily against Derrick Henry. I'm not saying Brees Hall is Derrick Henry, but a good running back and a sound uh, and a sound defense right now. When you're going, when you're the Bills, those are two potential trouble areas. And so, obviously, we've got an extra day to get ready for the game with it being on Monday night. Ryan, myself, Catherine, and Mark, we will have full coverage all week long, starting with later on today. We'll hear from Sean McDermott and the coordinators as we sort of put this Texans loss to bed. Ryan and I will be back next Tuesday following week six and Monday Night Football to break down the game against the Jets. So for Ryan O'Halloran, I am Jay Skirsky, and thank you so much for watching. 